Welcome to Sacred Cow Shipyards, where no ship is safe from being taken down to its nuts and bolts. Welcome back, folks. It seems like it's time for another episode of Just What Exactly Were They Thinking? This week, we'll actually be taking care of something that uh, I am frankly astonished I was able to fit onto my docks, but there it is, staring at me like some malevolent block of concrete, which is kind of exactly what it is. Um... Anyways, we're going to be taking a look at something from the Stargate SG-1 universe. And yes, that is the TV series that was spawned off of the Stargate movie from way back when. And SG-1 itself spawned another sequel series called Atlantis, which was fairly watchable, mostly because we got Jason Momoa playing with a not-really-but-kind-of revolver. And then Atlantis spawned something that was totally not watchable at all, and so the things go. Anyways, like I said, today we're going to be focusing on SG-1 itself, and specifically SGC, the Stargate Command. Yes, I know, it's not a spaceship, it's not a starship, it's not a vehicle, it's not a vessel, it's not really anything, but technically it is a method of transportation given that it does actually have a Stargate buried in its bowels. So work with me here. The short summary of the SGC is that it is where us humies store our Stargate. It is a very large ring that can generate stable wormholes between other very large rings. Uh, the SGC itself is actually buried in the Cheyenne Mountain Complex, which you might know as the helm of NORAD. And the Stargate is pretty much at one of the lower, if not lowest, levels in the mountain. And this is kind of where the problem starts. So the, the Stargate itself is, like I said, a pretty large ring. It's 25, 30 feet in diameter. I don't know specifically. It's probably written down somewhere, but it's not important. The point is, this is a uh, method of transportation for things up to its full internal diameter. And us Humies went and buried it, which makes sense because it's a military operation and we're trying to keep it safe and hidden and not scare the normies out in the world because they still don't know that there are aliens out there. So we buried it, yes. And ostensibly, the burying was also for a defensive purpose because as much as the Stargate can dial out, bad guys can dial in. And so the point was to make them have to fight through the entire Cheyenne Mountain Complex before they got out to the surface and then started raising whatever the hell they were going to do. Okay, fine. Uh, it works, kind of. But the problem is, the, the room that the Stargate occupies makes literally no sense at all. And again, I want to specify that the Stargate generates stable wormholes across literal cross-galaxy distances. It consumes a metric butt-ton of energy. And for some reason, the Stargate Command gate room is built such that the control room that houses the computers and interface that allows us to dial out of the Stargate directly overlooks the Stargate itself through a plate glass window. Okay, even getting past the point that the Stargate is functionally a very large bomb, and this actually comes up in a couple different episodes, things come through the Stargate. In fact, Colonel Jack O'Neill got a blinking arrow in the arm, and cue the appropriate joke from whatever game that was, but he got an arrow in the arm, shot through a Stargate across the galaxy, it went through the wormhole, popped out of our Stargate, blazed straight through that plate glass window, and straight through his arm. And why would you do that? I mean, even worse, immediately above the control room is like the briefing room slash meeting room of the SGC, complete with a, a big old table and chairs and presentation screens and whatever the hell else. So you could have foreign, or not foreign, but U.S. dignitaries visiting, and suddenly there's a shooting war going on on the other side of that plate glass window. And then immediately off of that meeting room is the office of the commanding general of the SGC itself. So, you know, the guy who knows all the stuff and has security clearances out the wazoo and should be protected because he knows all the stuff is right off the doorway that the bad guys come through. All right, sure. And yes, I will grant that there are blast doors that come down and blah, 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 so on and so forth. But we are dealing with aliens and extraterrestrials and whatever else 
who have directed energy weapons and inertia drives and faster than light travel and all kinds of other things. Let's just leave it at our blast doors are woefully insufficient. And you'll have to excuse the blue squared off lines on this particular graphic. Uh, someone was trying to demonstrate that the blast doors that come down and cover the control room would not fit in the space immediately above the control room because there's that meeting room there. And well, they're, they're not wrong. There's a reason you don't see that very often happening in the series. Anyways, so like I said, bad guys can come through the gate. So we came up with this nifty little iris thing that covers the wormhole portal micrometers off its surface and prevents material from fully materializing as it comes out of the Stargate. Okay, fine. Uh, it, it's hand-waving. I mean, we have stable wormholes and cross-galaxy travel and yeah, there, there's a lot of hand-waving in, in Stargate. But still, Given the gate room, and given this this is functionally current technology, marginally past technology, technically given that Stargate was first aired in the 90s, but the room is not actually big enough to functionally defend. Oh, yeah, I know, every time there's an unscheduled inbound traveler, we have all these cute little Air Force Special Forces grunts come popping out with their adorable little M16s and 40mm grenade launchers, and yes... They give them grenade launchers to use in a room that is probably, uh, I don't know, 75 feet wide, 150 feet long, and 50 feet tall? Because, you know, obviously shrapnel doesn't bounce and concussion waves don't do really bad things in concrete boxes. Okay, sure. And... Even so, I mean, all these troops are basically stacked up at the end of a ramp that comes directly out of the Stargate. It's not like they're given any cover or any kind of way of shielding themselves. And the show demonstrates that things that are shot into the Stargates, for example, that arrow or the, the Jaffa staff weapon blasts, go clean through the Stargate as if it was just anything else that the Stargate was carrying. So... An enemy could just start blazing away at a Stargate knowing that there are bad guys on the other side, and our idiot troops would just get mowed down, because where else would they go? And then there are these stupid things like a rocket launcher. For some reason, there's a rocket launcher positioned directly in front of the control room, shooting directly at the Stargate. Now, again, yes, uh, the rocket would go through the Stargate and explode on the other side. So I guess if some baddies were coming through, we were trying to launch through the Stargate and stop them on the other side. But the backblast alone, that is to say when the rocket motor lights off and starts pushing, that that jet of superheated rocket exhaust is going to like splatter off the concrete wall behind it and kill anyone adjacent to it. Okay, great. Um, you're, you're doing the bad guy's work for you. And then, and then, there are these two 50 caliber mounts on either side of the ramp. They're like a third of the way up the ramp. And they point up significantly because the Stargate is pretty high off the ground in the, the gate room. So... They're not even useful in shooting through the gate. I mean, you, you still could shoot through the gate, but it would be shooting up into the sky on the other side, and nobody really cares about that so much. But even so, I mean, if, if you're shooting at the bad guys as they come through the gate, you're shooting up at them, so you've already seeded them the high ground, and then you are so close to the gate that in order to engage a bad guy coming through at a full running tilt... Those 250 cal mounts are going to have to turn into each other. Um, I see a problem here. And then, the, and then, and then, and then, the, there are vehicles in the Stargate universe that can transit the gates. Not many. Um, they actually mostly only occur in the Atlantis spinoff series. But the, the, the bad guys in the series, the gold, did experiment with a needle threading Death Glider, which is the aircraft they use for combat, where it was designed to be flown through a Stargate. All right, so we've got this stack of human flesh, and then we've got plate glass windows, and then the entire control system for the Stargate, all lined up in this fairly decently solid straight line coming out of the gate. So all you need is some nutbag and a needle threader just bearing down on a gate to Earth, and he pops out, he can't stop himself, 
augers into the control room, and then his Nakoda reactor, which is how most of the energy by the aliens is created, goes critical and takes out everything. At, but, it, what? I mean, in, in limited fairness, the, the, the concept of the gate room is not horrible. You do want a fairly confined space for bad guys to pop out into. You want a, a, a kill box, uh, something that you can absolutely saturate with fire or f weapons or chemicals or whatever the heck to stop them doing whatever the hell it is they're doing. But it should be exactly that. It should be a very large concrete room with auto turrets and uh, chemical release systems and massive, massive doors that seal off that lead to other massive doors that lead to other massive doors that lead to very heavily controlled elevators that only go to one spot that is also itself a kill box and then on from there. Instead, the, the two big doors leading out of the gate room just lead directly into the base. I mean... At least there are 90 degree turns to get out of the doors, so any explosion in the gate room probably won't filter through the rest of the gate. Except still, the control room is right there, and there aren't any blast doors leading out of the control room. There's just a blast door protecting the control room. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I'm Navy, so there's obviously some inter-service rivalry going on here, but if this is Air Force's idea of compartmentalization, they fail. And that's all from Sacred Cow Shipyards. Please be advised that any ship left on the dock for more than 24 hours will be compressed to a cube. Have a good day.